listening to the Sermon Audio Podcast from Redeemer Lutheran Church and Pastor Paul Pett. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our gospel readings, and I'm going to read just a small part of that one more time. Jesus said, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friend. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. This is our text. Be ready. Father in heaven, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts, fill our minds, and, and fill absolutely every aspect of our being. That we would understand and grow to appreciate what real love truly is. And help us. Help us to not only embrace it from you, but willingly and enthusiastically live it and share it in your name. Amen. Okay, so was everybody paying attention during the gospel reading? Okay, I got one head shaking yes, and everybody else, I don't know. Okay. Three relationships. Three relationships. Give me one. Nope. Loving relationship means means between two different parties. That's what I'm looking for. Father and Son is one. Jesus and us is two. Us and everybody else is the third. Okay? So you got all of those... Where's usually the failure? God's love toward his son doesn't fail, right? Jesus' love for us doesn't fail, right? There's a lot of people that aren't going to want to hear what I have to say now. If you've been watching the news, you've been seeing what's been going on on college and university campuses all over the United States. This is not love. Hate is not love. No matter what the devil tries to convince you, hate is never love. You can't say, I'm supporting a terrorist, and say, I love my fellow man. True or false? I'm not going to come out and talk about all the aspects of this. I want you to understand priority when it comes to love. Hate is never love. And so it's so important as we listen to this, we understand the nature of this kind of love. So when we start out with a gospel reading, if you could bring it up for me, Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. And there are lots of different kinds of love. Okay, in the Greek language, there are five different words that mean love. Five. Okay? We're not talking about the love between a parent and child. You saw that on display? I'm assuming you love Beckham. New baby, I hope so. Okay. Love between husband and wife? Romantic love? Love between brothers? The kind of love we're talking about here is agape. And that agape love is exactly what Jesus starts with. As the Father has loved me. It's a love between Jesus and his Father. The love between Jesus and God. By doing that kind of love, Jesus has responsibility. 
He goes into that in verse 10. Read it with me. You keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So, did Jesus need to keep the commandments? Why? One four-letter word. Well, love. love for his father, first and foremost. Love of his, toward his father meant, I'm going to love him by submitting to him. I'm going to love him by obeying him. I'm going to love him by doing what he commands me. I'm going to love him by serving his will, by carrying it out to the letter. I'm going to love him by doing that very thing. And then, you think about what that truly means. Because did he only keep the commandments for the sake of his father? No. Well, whom else? Us. There's the first two relationships, right? Between God the Father and his son. Between the son and all believers in Jesus Christ. He's keeping the commandments for you and me. He's keeping the commandments so that this has power. This has meaning. This has eternal significance. For without his keeping the commandments, this doesn't mean a thing. Because it covers nothing. So when we listen to this, I want you to look at what he says next. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. So, you think that the joy between father and son is perfect all the time? Ooh. The father and the son. Is the relationship between Jesus and us as far as his love for us, perfect all the time. Is it easy to doubt that? I'm going to come back to that. Why is it easy to doubt that? I'm going to come back to that. What about the last relationship? See, God created love that it would bring joy. He's saying as much, Jesus is saying as much here that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. So, the love between a husband and wife, is that perfect all the time? The love between a, a parent and child, is that perfect all the time? I tell you, at three in the morning, Becca screaming like he did this morning, you're not thinking love. Shut up! I want to sleep! Think about all that breaks down. Breaks down with selfishness. And sometimes as we read this, what we hear is a conditional statement. Go back up to the top again. Listen to what it says in verse 10 again. Starts with what word? If, which might tend to have us believe what? It's conditional. Only if, only if you keep my commandments you abide in my love. Is that what Jesus is saying? Is that a conditional statement? You see, sometimes when you translate literally from Greek to English, you lose something. Because the languages are different. Like I said, English has got one word for love. Greek has five. You think something's lost in the translation from time to time? Absolutely. So, when he says this, think of it in this way. When you keep my commandments, or as you keep my commandments, I want you to think about which loves whom first. Could you put up uh, 1 John chapter 4? 1 John chapter 4 says this. Read it together. We love because whose love came first? His. So everything that we do out of love is what? 
A response. A response to love that's already been given. A response to love that's already been received. A response to love that's already been expressed. A response to love that is perfect. In verse 13, we hear the words, greater love has no one than this. I want to ask you, when you have heard that verse quoted, in what context have you heard it? Memorial Day, Veterans Day, Fourth of July, right? Don't take this wrong. Veterans who've given them their lives for their country was done out of love. Love for their fellow man. Love for possibly another soldier. Love for possibly their whole platoon. Love for their nation. But is Jesus' love greater than me? Absolutely. Because Jesus didn't die for just one person. Jesus didn't die for just a small group of people. Jesus didn't die for just one nation. Jesus died for absolutely everyone, all mankind, all people, all nations, for all times. That's those for whom Jesus died. And because of that, his love is that much greater. Greatest love of all. The greater love is his love. But he calls us friends. You ever had anybody else introduce you as a friend? Say, hey, this is this is my friend Scott. I'd like to introduce my friend Scott. Scott, these are my other friends. Asher, this is my friend Asher. Come here. This is my friend Asher. Asher likes to hug me every chance he gets. I want to introduce Asher. Asher, these are my friends. What do you think? Okay. See, it means they have an important place in our life. We have an important place in the life of our Savior just because he loves us. And is that a conditional love or an unconditional love? Unconditional. Meaning, we don't have to pass tests. We don't have to meet standards in order for him to love us. He loves us wholeheartedly, all the time, forever. We need to know that. Especially when we're messing up our part of the love relationship. Just do we do that? Go back to the beginning again. Notice the la- or the second sentence in the first verse. He just starts by saying, If the Father has loved me, so have I loved you, abide in my love. Okay? Challenge question. What does the word abide mean? Somebody watch my sermon. Because we have a new dog at home. A lot of you have heard about it already. But... She's in the house, so she gets to be an illustration just like the kid. We're teaching our dog to stay. But the dog is a puppy, which means attention span is... Right? Meaning stay. What? Who? 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 Now, apply it in your own life. And Jesus says, abide. He's saying to you, stay. Stay in a relationship with me. Stay in a love relationship with me. Stay in faith in me. Stay. What tiny things? Oh, oh, oh. Do we get distracted easily? Why do people fall away from the church? Why do people fall out of faith? Why do people walk away? Because God stopped loving them? Greater love has 
no one than this. He's not walking away. He is invested. As a matter of fact, when we go to verse 16, what does it say about the nature of his love? You did not choose me, but... He made you his own, chose you to be his own, embraced you as his own. There are so many Christian denominations just lose it on this fact. They think, I have to make the decision. I have to choose him. I have to do this, this, and this in order to be his disciple. Wait a minute. You did not choose me, but I chose you. That should do two things to us. One, it should be absolutely humbling. Humbling in the fact that I've got a God, a Savior who loves me so much, He chose me to be His own. But two, what else should it be? Right? It should give you a great deal of comfort. The relationship wasn't my choice. And so his love for me is going to be what? Constant. Consistent. Persistent. Never ending. We may have a short attention span, but the God, the eternal God of the universe, does not. His heart, his soul, his life is focused on us. Does it sound too good to be true? We may not deserve it, but he gave it to us nonetheless. Greater love has no one than that. Jesus said three words. I want you to read with you. Remember nothing I said but these three words. Abide in So if you can't be free, let's do one. Day. Jesus' name. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit, we abide in hope. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com. Thank you.